Ahoy hoy, and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to do a blind reaction. I said I wouldn't do these, but I'm going to do it again. A blind reaction to SCP Overlord. Uh, I'm going to get right into it because this is a very long video. It's about 30, it looks like 34 minutes, so the, I'm sure there's some credits, so it's probably closer to 30. But, um, important note, this is not a substitute for you watching it yourself. So the volume will be a little lower. Uh, I've got uh, subtitles on so you can hear over me talking or hear over me talking. So you can see what they're saying over me talking and follow along. But there's going to be a link in the description below to the original video. If you want to actually watch it, go watch it there or just run it in the background while we're, I'm reacting to it. If that's what you'd like, if you want to watch it with somebody else, that's usually the point of these. Um, I'm going to give my honest opinion on the quality level. Um, I, as I said on Tuesday, I get the inclination I'm going to be a fan more than, uh, or more, I'm going to be a fan and like this probably, but who knows? Anyway, let's get into it. Cool studio logo. That's something. Yeah, everything about this already makes me think it's going to be pretty good. Like how like the first three seconds I'm like, oh, this looks great. It's a matter of the professionalism. Alright. <clears throat> Sorry. Alright, if I had like one piece of feedback uh so far, this is again very, very good so far. Uh sound design seems good. Uh the 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 suit up sequence was a little tactical for me, but I can see that working for some people. It was a little mm, didn't quite work, especially the part where the guy pulls his like pulls his thing on, uh, and that one actor who just I, it seemed like they did two shots of it, so it must have been important. But he was like, "Hmm, no one does that. Not anyone I've ever met." Well, I'm not going to say the acting is bad here, but it doesn't match the quality of the uh, cinematography or the sound design. It's it's like a, a little step below. So that's a tiny problem, though. Like, I just don't I don't think even like a, a fairly cheap television program would find this level of acting acceptable. It's not the actors, probably, or it's probably not the director either. It's just a matter of not having time or money to do like, m like, to do it until it's perfect. Yeah, and I say acting, by the way. Uh, physical acting is fine. Uh, it's just the voice acting feels a little stilted and wooden. You can't see their faces, so there's not a lot of, like, reactions they can do. But even this guy's eyes here, he's just like... There we go. very muted effect in their eyes there's no that's the eyes are the only thing they have available to do their to do reactions with and it's just like little little ticks tiny tiny movements not a lot of anyway that's a tiny problem i don't even know what scp this is about Wait, what's the tactical benefit of this found of this formation actually they're like tightly they're tight together instead of spread out and they're all facing forward sorry i was taking a look at their boots 
It's one of the few things that you can in it. For military operators, the boots you have are very important, and those do not look like the kind of boots I would expect from a military operator, but, you know. It also seems like these guys get into, like, are very individualized, which is sort of unexpected, but not, in, in, in a non-governmental agency like this, not wholly unexpected, but you would... Mm. Like, one guy is, looks like he's wearing jeans, another guy is just wearing casual shoes. Not, I mean, they're still boots, but... I mean, I'm really having to look for things to complain about, by the way. This is still very good. I will say this, there's more identifying information on these guys than I would generally expect from a secret governmental organization. It looks like they've got their numbers for their actual uh like what their position in the squad like one oh one three and one one and etc is right there on the side and then on the other side there's like a f it looks like a flag telling what country they're from which is even more ridiculous <laughs> to me but from a i guess from a movie standpoint it really looks cool but on the I mean, it, and it kind of makes sense because it helps identify these people. But from a, like a in-universe standpoint, I'm like, no, that would that's identifying information. Why give anyone extra identifying information? Also, I see the little ninja turtle there on the uh, the patch. I'm curious. Maybe that's the, maybe that's related to the name of the MTF, or maybe that's just a stylistic choice of the individual. That is a really, really neat choice. Um, I will gi I'll give you that. <laughs> having a bunch, like, having the missing posters on the trees on the own approach is actually, like, that's that's a neat idea. That's good writing right there. Boy, I tell you what. Kudos to the writer. And that little reveal where it gets, well, I don't know. I don't know if I would have done it a little differently, but like start with one and move up instead of the several. Well, you start with one here, but then you get these four and then you rise up to be more. I feel like you could have made it better with just one and then, but it's fine. But there are 10 missing posters and nine missing people. No. Oh. This uh, suffers from something that I've noticed in a lot of SCP related content, and that's like a slow first third. Um, I assume it's going to pick up like most of them do towards the, the second third and the last third, but yeah. You start with a the action sequence, not action sequence, but the suit up sequence, and the and th that was the introduction was good, and then after that we've just been walking and walking and walking and it, it, we're not getting really to know these characters, we're getting a little confirmation, we got one conversation earlier and that's literally about it. Okay, let's take a look at some of this out, because this is the first time I think I've actually got a clear view of everybody. So a lot of these guys are just in fucking jeans. I wonder if a lot of this was just the fact that they didn't have the costumes available to put everybody in the exact same thing, so they just kind of went with a more of a unique, individualized outfit. Okay, they do have a guy turned around watching their uh, six. So, um, yeah, but just one guy. Take him out, and they'll never see anything coming up from behind. All right, building tension is good here. Now we're about to run into either a break in the tension or an action scene. A break in the tension where nothing happens as soon as they go in is a better writing choice, in my opinion, but we'll see. Oh, he's... Okay. Flashbang did. Oh, 
Good, good. Breaking the tension. Elevate. Why is the intercom stopped? Shouldn't you still hear it? Even inside? I'm just really kind of taken aback by these professional operators being like, in a, in a world where they know that cognito hazards exist, seeing a video file called Play Me and hitting, yeah, we're going to listen to it. And, and like the base being like, yeah, that's a good idea. Why did he, that's silly. Why would he make that video? Or yeah, why would he make that video to play? That's odd. I mean, that video doesn't do anything other than, like, tell you plot. Not a fan. Show, don't tell. See, so there's seven or so people. They're not floating. They're sitting on top of a fence, but the view look makes it look like they might be floating. That's nice. That's a neat idea. I wonder if that was deliberate or if it was just a, hey, this looks really cool. Let's make sure it's in a shot. Have they communicated? I mean, you have to assume they've communicated this to the outside team, but you didn't put it on screen. You didn't show me. Wait, they changed the rules of engagement after losing, like, two people to, by the way, let's try non-lethal now. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, that, that's just, that struck me as ridiculous. <laughs> rules of engagement have changed. Now we're going for non-lethal first. I mean, oh my god. You know that they've murdered two people and you know they're invisible, which gives them just the best fucking option. <laughs> they're invisible, they've killed two people, and now you're like, give them a warning first, which just gives you so many opportunities to fucking die. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Oh, they're all gonna die. <laughs> nah, maybe not, but it seems like they're gonna die. Wait, isn't that a dead end down there? Well, this is going to go well. This is the hope spot, right? Where you're like, maybe these guys will survive all of this. Yeah, 
It's a cognito hazard, of course. You would have figured that out already by now. Oh, hey, that's cool. All right, well, that's that. That's pretty good, I guess. Trying to... Hmm. I want to make sure that the uh, credits get rolled through in case for some reason this is the only time you see this. Let me just mouse over. Uh, is there anything? Just credits. All right. So I'll let them play while I'm talking about this and the abstract, I guess. I'm not, I'm not really sure what I think about this. It's good, but unfortunately it's too short for it to really, really work for me. Like the tension and everything. I mean, there's a bunch of disconnected problems. You've got the monsters, the invisible people monsters, I should say. Uh, and that doesn't really go anywhere. You know, it's just that they're there and they're invisible. There's the creatures, the, the floating things in the sky, which, that's neat, I guess. There's too many disconnected things that don't feel like there's a unified... It doesn't feel like there's a unified uh, thread connecting all of the various elements of this. But, uh, I mean, but... Just because there's not a unified... Like I said, just because that doesn't mean that there's a problem, really. It's very, very good. I don't know what their budget was, um, but they did a very, very good job with this, I'll say. Um, it's so funny looking at some of the names on here. It's a guy, one of the Patreon backers was DickButt420, apparently. Shout out! <laughs> the, uh, yeah, there's not really much of a, yeah, I'm going to say that a couple times, but there's not really much of a unifying thread to the, um, to the various horror elements. Um, I feel as if it had gone on a little bit longer, they may have had a time for that. But at the same time, I mean, they had a good ending in their mind, and they didn't they didn't milk it. They do that sometimes, or not they. I've seen that sometimes in scripts, and I've also seen it a lot of times on the SCP Wiki, but more often not than it's in scripts, where they get like a good solid ending, and then they fuck it up by adding on like an extra three or four minutes worth of screen time. Uh, they didn't do that here, so there is that. Um, I think overall, I would say that this, uh, was def is definitely a step up from previous works that have been done, and I am very eager to see more. Um, any issues are very minor, really. Any issues I have are very minor in the grand scheme of things. Uh, which is important to mention, because, I mean, I brought up a couple... Like, there was the the weirdness of don't shoot first, ask, you know, <laughs> let's 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 change the rules of engagement to non-lethal first. Like, that makes any sense in that particular situation. Uh, but, you know... Let's see if there's any post-credits thing. Probably not. Yeah. Nope, it's over. There was an ad for Netflix, apparently. All right, well, I'm going to have to sit on that one and think about it. I may do another video later giving my thoughts on this kind of storytelling. Regardless, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki and Dr. J Redacted, who have both pledged at $100, and Morgan, who has pledged at $40. One other important note, go check this out. I've got the link in the description. Go check this out on, um, I believe his name is Evan, yeah, Evan Royalty's page. Um, look at the video there, watch it for yourself, get your own opinions and everything, uh, and then if you want to come back and discuss it, you can. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Tuesday.